Dr. Andrew Hill, good evening. You're a senior visiting research fellow at the Department of Pharmacology, University of Liverpool in the UK. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. I'm just going to share my screen. So today I'm going to present a meta-analysis of the randomized clinical trials of ivermectin to treat COVID-19 infection. And this work was funded by UNITAID as part of the World Health Organization ACT Accelerator Program to improve access to COVID-19 treatment, vaccination, and diagnostics. So as we know, ivermectin is a widely available generic repurposed treatment for COVID-19 being evaluated in clinical trials worldwide. It's very attractive because it costs between one and two US dollars for a treatment course in countries like India and Bangladesh. And there have been many clinical trials set up. However, there is no trial like the WHO Solidarity or NHS Recovery Trials. The trials are all in the region of 100 to 500 patients maximum, and no individual clinical trial is large enough to clearly establish uh, efficacy. But the combined data from all the available clinical trials might be large enough to assess the clinical efficacy reliably and to get to a WHO recommendation for the treatment being used worldwide. So the research question I've tried to answer, and I, I work a lot with the World Health Organization as a consultant on HIV and hepatitis, we're using the same techniques for COVID-19 to ask, is there enough clinical evidence to support the worldwide approval of ivermectin to treat COVID-19? We're going to be using endpoints that have already been recommended as part of the WHO target product profile for treatments. So faster time to viral clearance, faster time to clinical recovery, a shorter duration of hospitalization and improved survival. So we used a search strategy with a systematic review of randomized trials of ivermectin to treat COVID-19 infection. We looked at databases on PubMed, Embase. We looked at preprint databases, looking at uh, uh, manuscripts that haven't been published yet, but this is being used very widely for COVID-19 databases like MedX, RIV, Research Square. We looked at all the databases of clinical trials ongoing, clinicaltrials.gov, coronavirus antiviral research database, the WHO website, and also country level clinical trials websites in Egypt, Iran, India, and China. We found 11 randomized trials of ivermectin, and this is really changing on a daily basis. We're getting a huge amount of cooperation from investigators working all over the world. I'll show you the results from these 11 studies. Now, the countries involved Egypt, Bangladesh, Iran, Iraq, and two small studies, one in Argentina that will be covered separately, and one in Spain. What we need to remember here is the daily dose of ivermectin can change between 0.2 milligrams per kilogram to 0.4 or even higher doses in some studies in 0.6 milligrams with a duration of between one and five days. A lot of the studies are double blind and those are, those are noted DB in brackets. Some of them are open label, some of them are single blind. But the sample size is the highest is 400 going down to uh, below 100 for some of the studies. The patients mainly mild, mild to moderate, some uh, with severe infection. And the, the uh, control arm is generally standard of care, but can include hydroxychloroquine or azithromycin. So the meta-analysis methods we used, we only included randomized trials because with the WHO grading criteria used to recommend treatments, these are generally based on a systematic review and meta-analysis only of randomized trials. And the, the studies, uh, the, 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 the trials uh, of uh, non-randomized generally, uh, they're used as supportive evidence. So we use Cochrane mantle Heinzel testing with inverse variance weighting and random effects modeling to compare outcomes between ivermectin and control treatment. And we looked at the effects of dose on response as well. What we first saw looking at viral clearance was faster viral clearance across the largest studies. So you can see in the large Egyptian study for the people with moderate infection or severe infection, a clearance time of five days versus 10 days for moderate, six days versus 12 days for severe, and in Bangladesh, using a slightly lower dose, 
9.7 days versus 12.7 days. And the largest trials dominated the meta-analysis showing this conclusion. We then looked at hospital discharge, faster times to hospital discharge was seen in the largest studies looking at the highest doses. And on this graph, on the, on the left-hand side, you can see studies using higher doses moving to lower doses on the right-hand side. And we saw overall faster times to hospital discharge and a higher percentage of patients experiencing clinical recovery when taking ivermectin relative to control treatment. In this meta-analysis, you can see the percentage of patients getting achieving clinical recovery. And this is, the, the clinical recovery was reported in different ways in different studies. So that overall, there was a 43% higher chance of patients achieving clinical recovery on ivermectin versus control, with a confidence interval of 21 to 67%. We then looked at survival, and you can see here in the ivermectin arms of the studies, eight out of 573 people died, 5%, versus in the control arms, 44 out of 507 people died, 17%. And looking at the meta-analysis, first of all, of the randomized trials, you can see this corresponds to an 83% reduction in the risk of dying for people taking ivermectin versus control with confidence intervals of 65% to 92% improvements in survival. Then when we looked at the, we, we looked at the observation studies as supportive evidence and those also showed a significant improvement in survival. So combining everything, there is a 72% improvement in survival for ivermectin versus control with confidence intervals of 38 to 87%. Now, we looked then at dose response effects, because as you can see, there are many different doses and durations being looked at in these studies. The strongest treatment effects we saw in the Egyptian trial with five days of treatment using a, a 0.4 mg per kg dose. And the, the smallest effects were seen in an Iranian trial with one day of treatment using a 0.2 mg per kg dose. We also had data from randomized uh, comparisons in Bangladesh where people were given either one or five days of ivermectin. In Argentina, PKPD correlations were analyzed and those will be uh, presented in a moment. So you can see in the Egyptian study where the dose is highest, we see the strongest effects on either uh, improvement in prognosis or hospital stays or the days where people were RT-PCR positive. That's true either looking at mild, moderate patients or severe patients. Uh, and then by contrast, the smallest treatment effects or treatment benefits were seen. They were still statistically significant, but they were smaller in terms of duration of low oxygen saturation, duration of hospital stay and death rates. If we look at the Bangladesh trial, where people were given either one day or five days of ivermectin, the, the one day was in combination with doxycycline. So the five days is in green, and you can see the time to PCR negative was uh, was shorter. People, more people became PCR negative over time in the five day group compared to placebo, and that was statistically significant. Whereas in the one day group, in this quite small sample size, there was not a significant difference in uh, achievement of PCR negativity. So the limitations of this analysis, we need to remember that we're looking at 11 randomized trials in 1,456 patients. With our tracking systems, we found another 45 randomized clinical trials of ivermectin. So there truly is a huge research effort ongoing worldwide. There are 7,100 patients that we know of in these clinical trials, and there are probably more trials that we're going to find as we carry on searching. Another limitation is the potential for publication bias. Perhaps we're seeing the good news. Perhaps we're seeing the better trials. There might be other unpublished trials, but we are now using the denominator of all the trials that we can find and asking the individual investigators for their feedback. Some of the trials are open label. There's the potential for investigator bias. They might judge people to have recovered more quickly or to be ready for hospital discharge if they know that they're taking a treatment that might work. There is a range of doses and durations of treatment being looked at, and the endpoints differ between the trials. But if we look at the database that we have at the moment, 11 trials uh, in uh, these six countries, I just want to show you what we're going to be analyzing next, which is 
7,100 patients, 56 trials, and now we're going to be looking at 21 different countries. So you can see that the huge growth in research on ivermectin, these are all randomized clinical trials, a lot of them double blinded. And in the next six weeks, we will be seeing results from a 500 patient study in uh, Brazil, a 450 patient study in Colombia, and also another large study in Argentina. So it's not long until the meta-analysis that we've just done on 1,400 reaches 3,000, which is about the evidence base that was used for the original approval of remdesivir. The approval of dexamethasone was based on uh, over 5,000 patients, but the, the survival benefit was quite small and it needed a large sample size to achieve uh, significance. So you can see the number of countries running these trials that we're tracking. And in conclusion, in this meta-analysis, we are seeing uh, using standard WHO grade criteria, a faster time to viral clearance, shorter duration of hospitalization, 43% higher rates of clinical recovery, and 83% improvement in survival rates. The next steps are to include more clinical trials in these meta-analyses to confirm the clinical benefits that we've seen initially. And we need to make, we need to agree on an optimized dose regime. Is it 0.2? Is it 0.4 milligrams? Is it for three days, five days? We need to define it. And then results from three more key randomized trials will be available in January. And I'm hoping to be able to come back. If we see these same trends consistently observed across more studies, then this really is gonna be a transformational treatment. So thanks very much to my research team, to the network, and people have been very cooperative. All the trials working in the countries have volunteered their information very, very